Hi, everyone. I can listen to that piano music all day. <laughs> I just want that to play permanently in my studio. Uh, I'm Mike Bennett, and welcome to Artslandia Happy Hour. Uh, this is generously presented by the Oregon Society of Artists. Going to talk about them a lot tonight. Um, they're an amazing, enthusiastic presenter, and uh, I've got a lot I can't wait to say about them. Uh, Artslandia has been giving us a place to call home every week, uh, at every weekday at 5 p.m. If you want to support their efforts, please consider becoming a sustaining su subscriber. Uh, the link will be pinned uh, in the comments, uh, and I will be re repeating that throughout the uh the evening. Uh, thanks. Welcome to my studio. Uh, believe it or not, this is my garage. Uh, I've kind of taken it over with um, some pretty wacky things. Uh, everything you see in here is reclaimed wood, uh, reclaimed furniture, <laughs> some of them, and uh, it's all painted with uh, either donated acrylics that are taking up space in people's craft closets or uh, really cool uh, Metro paint, which is remixed house paint that I can use for uh, products that stay outside. So it's exterior paint that's pretty great. And we're going to play a fun little game uh, later to try and guess some paint colors. Uh, so I um, kind of want to start by just explaining what the heck it is that I do. Uh, so I'm an artist. Uh, oh, I see piano music by David Zafford. So cool. I love that. Uh, thank you for getting that in the comments. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, I'm a full-time painter, and I uh, love to make cartoons. I'm surrounded by them. Uh, I'll unplug my computer and kind of give you a studio tour later. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Lance. Uh, so I reclaim wood that I find at the Rebuilding Center around town on Craigslist uh, that is left in my driveway, which happens a lot, uh, into these giant cartoon cutouts. I'll sneak out of the way. These are just a few that I've kept around uh, every Every place in this space is covered with paintings. Um, for a long time, I was taking these cutouts and hiding them around Portland for people to take. Uh, with the introduction of coronavirus to the world, which has been um, a struggle for a lot of us, I have refrained from hiding uh, dozens of paintings for people to take and uh, scavenge for. I do a lot of scavenger hunts. Um, I will continue to do that in the future, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but in the meantime, I've been kind of pivoting into a different direction. Uh, so for a while, I was putting uh, artwork in front of my home, which is super fun. I'm going to move this down just a little bit so I can sit more comfortably. I was putting art in front of my home, and uh, people would walk by and enjoy it, and that's super fun. And unfortunately, uh, I was leaving these pieces outside, my own fault potentially. Uh, and I had 13 of my paintings taken overnight. Sad, but you know it happens. Uh, I should have I should have kept things inside. It was my own fault. Um, so I started uh, pulling everything inside, keeping it inside, and um, being a little bummed out. I had a lot of families reach out to me and say, uh, "I agree, Jackie. I do have the best job." <laughs> um, I had a lot of families in the neighborhood reach out and say, uh, "What?" A bummer, we used to go by your house all the time to check out uh, Big Bird and see how Big Bird was doing. Just in the wrong direction, here's Big Bird. To see how Big Bird's doing or to see how Yoshi's doing. Um, and that made me realize, oh my gosh, people actually use uh, our front yard as like an escape from the craziness that we're, we were dealing with in the coronavirus times and still are. So I had to think, I had to really think about how to do this. Uh, Lindsay, I will definitely give you a studio tour, I promise. I'm very excited to share this space with you. Uh, I thought, okay, how do I, how do I force myself to bring things inside at night and put things out in the morning? It's like business hours. It's not really a business, but what, what is business hours? And what do families love? Um, zoos are, are a, tough one for us. Uh, the animals for entertainment is not something I totally agree with by any means. Um, but I love what they stand for, conservation and really, really incredible exhibits. And I thought, well, no one's going to be upset about reclaimed painted animals. <laughs> so uh, seeing the age of a lot of the kids who come by, I thought maybe it'd be cool if I did an alphabet. So I made an alphabet zoo in front of our house. Uh, every day I put another animal in, out uh, on the stoop or in the grass and I slowly grew this A to zoo, uh, the world's largest lawn zoo in 2020 um, for everyone to enjoy. So for a month, we had dozens of people walking past the house 
socially distantly, and it's great. Uh, we sold shirts. Uh, the admission to the zoo was free, but I did ask people who enjoyed it to consider donating to um, a really, really wonderful organization that I love called One Tail at a Time. So all of my shirts uh, about the A to Zoo, uh, we donated a really huge portion of almost the entirety of the sale to One Tail at a Time. Um, and uh, our actually our second check that was supposed to go to One Tail at a Time, we agreed would go better to Don't Shoot Portland, uh, which is supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, which is incredibly important right now. So uh, the zoo is kind of growing and blown up from just a simple thievery of my art. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show uh, something that my friend Joe Kai and I made together uh, that kind of encapsulates what this zoo was. But before we do that, I do wanna give a couple more messages. You're, uh, if you're just tuning in, this is Artslandia Happy Hour. Uh, generously presented by the Oregon Society of Artists, who I want to talk about. I wrote down a couple of talking points, um, so I apologize if it looks like I'm reading. It's because I am. Uh, I, this this organization is incredibly important. It's been around for a long time, and you all should know about them. So I'm going to do a little blabbering about this wonderful organization, and I hope you check them out. Um, so the OSA, or Oregon Society of Artists, um, has been dedicated to the education and nurturing of creative talent in the diverse communities of our region since 1926 which is a long time. That's great. Um, they promote the visual arts with education, educational and exhibition opportunities for artists at all levels of accomplishment, uh, which I think is very important. Um, you know, not that long ago, the only thing I had done was silly Vine videos or, um, you know, paintings that I shared on my Instagram account. And now I have a platform and I'm doing my best to share, share, share my platform with other artists as well. For a long time, the A to Zoo had a artist of the month. So, uh, Sixth grader Joaquin got to share his art outside of our house uh, every day for a month uh, with a wonderful, adoring audience. Uh, Joaquin actually has gotten a few commissions. He was commissioned to make a monkey. Uh, he makes cutouts also. Uh, I can pull out his art in a moment. I should have had that. Uh, the Oregon Society of Artists um, provide art classes online and in person. Uh, they include watercolor, plain air, collage, acrylics, oil and cold wax, printmaking, and more. Art shop work, artist workshops are one to three days in watercolor, pastels, printmaking, a la prima, and Chinese brush strokes, and many more. To celebrate this happy hour, and I'm very excited about this, um, anyone that mentions Artslandia receives a free drop-in class in the medium of their choice. So if you've been waiting to learn how to watercolor or learn how to try a new medium, uh, all you have to do is say Artslandia, and they will make sure that you get a free drop-in class. So um, hopefully that applies to me, because I will be doing that as well. Super pumped about that. Um, I'll remind you also uh, uh, towards the end of the stream in case you forget. Uh, they also have an art gallery, which is both online and in person. Uh, the Art of Sheltering in Place is currently available for view online. The Plain Air and Ala Prima show opens on July 2nd. So definitely check that out. Uh, children's summer camp art camps are being offered in July and there are free art demonstrations held monthly. Uh, if you are looking for someone, let me know. I'm happy to do one of those. <laughs> Cool, Ashley, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do my best to check out these comments as we go. Siobhan from my TikTok is pretty cool. Uh, all my art, I make behind the scenes videos of, of, so you can watch a 60 second video of me creating all these ridiculous things. Uh, I kind of took that process of the behind the scenes video and combined it with a um, really fun, uh, uh, like children's entertainment style about each animal. So you can see me painting uh, a sloth and then talking about Slots and, and what are what are so amazing about those. So let's move on over. I'm gonna share my screen and show you the A to Zoo music video that I made with my friend, my dear friend, Joe Kai, who um, just recently had a great happy hour. Uh, and yes, in the comments, let's all take a class together. I'm so down. All right, I'm gonna share my music video that Joe Kai wrote and I got to perform with him. And I think you'll get a pretty good idea of uh, what the A to Zoo is. Bear with me for one moment. All right. And here we go. Hey, Joe, want to help me open the A to Zoo today? Sure, Mike. Where should we start? Well, I'm not an arbark. I'm an armadillo. I've got plates on my back. I eat bugs by the kilo. I'm a baboon and I know how to shrug. You can't see it now, but I have no hair on my butt. Cassowary is my name. It's time that we met. I'm a living dinosaur, so don't you forget. I'm a dugong and I float in the sea. I 
eat only plants so I can live past 70. I said, I, yeah, I'm an elephant, the biggest, the baddest. But did you know my memory is good? In fact, I'm among the greatest. Fairy penguins, yes, they're actually blue. I like to preen on my feathers. That's how I stay so waterproof. J -j 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 I'm a giraffe I made from an old desk. I've got a long neck. That's what makes me the tallest. Humu, humu, nuku, nuku, apu, ah, ah. Humu, humu, nuku, nuku, apu, ah, ah. Humu, humu, nuku, nuku, apu, ah, ah. You make me wanna sauna If you come at me with power Then I drum my tail like drama I'm the tallest flying bird in the Americas Haven't you heard, Jabiru? I'm in Britannica I'm a kangaroo, I hip and I hop a lot I got my babies in my pocket Cause I'm the bomb Llama, llama, I don't wear pajamas Llama, llama, I spit where I wanna I'm a mountain lion, I'm a dangerous cat Get back you better watch it when I go on the attacker. I'm like a unicorn but swim in the ocean. My name is Narwhal and I don't need no potion. Copy my copy, I got legs like a zebra. I'm endangered, so please protect me, oh, but see ya, see ya. I'm a panda, I eat bamboo on repeat, yes please. Uh, I eat too much, I'm getting so sleepy. I am the cutest, promise, I am a quacker. I am so friendly that I smile like Mona Lisa. Welcome to the A to the Zoo. I like to make things. How about you? I am a rhino. Some call me rhinoceros. Don't try to mess with me. Don't be so preposterous. I am sloth. I'm slow. But I swim well. Did you know? I am a taper. I can walk underwater. I use my snout like a snorkel. It's no bother. Okari's face shows it's immune to malaria. The redder it gets, the others know it's superior. I am a viper. Watch out or I'll bite ya. Walruses have tusks, so watch out or they'll hurt ya. I'm a Xeris type of squirrel and I live in the ground. When a predator comes, I warn others with a Shout! This yak is tired of all these critter facts. All he hears is yakety yak. Don't talk back. I am a zebra and I'm closing this out. This song was for the animals. Okay, now let's jump around. Welcome to the A to the Zoo. Okay, uh, hopefully that's stuck in your head forever because uh, it's been stuck in my head forever. Very catchy. Uh, some of those uh, syncopations were very difficult. I do not perform rap very often. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to continue to support the A to Zoo, uh, the A to Zoo now lives 24 seven uh, for viewing at Hammer and Jack's 6406 Southeast Foster Road. Uh, you can go check it out. It's a wonderful independence toy store. You can drive by at night. There are lights. You can see it without getting out of your car. Uh, huge sidewalks you can walk by. If you want to continue to support me and the zoo, you can buy an A to Zoo shirt, which are very comfortable, printed by Shirt Nerdery. And um, an exclusive, I wasn't prepared. I didn't expect this, but I have an exclusive for Artslandia. Um, Monday, there will exist an A to Zoo poster. And I have one here um, that you can check out. Uh, they will be available for purchase um, on uh, uh, shirtnerdery.com. Uh, and there will be a very limited edition, but you get all the animals. Um, and my pal Hannah at Girl Power Illustrations helped me design this, and I am in love with it. Uh, it's going to be very hard to give these away. Anyway, uh, adzoopdx.com. You can check it out and visit. The fun thing about the A to Zoo is it has evolved a lot since it started. Uh, shortly after the A to Zoo, um, I 
got to oh thanks yeah there's the uh a to zoo link thank you so much uh yeah you can check out that music video there it's free it's on spotify it's on itunes you can check it out uh listen to it as much as you want uh the a to zoo has evolved a lot so uh Immediately after the Edizu finished, I did 10 bugs. Uh, I did an itsy bitsy bug museum, which you can also check out on my Instagram or my TikTok at my Mike, Mike Bennett Art. Uh, I did 10 bugs in a row, uh, similar style where I, I, I added bugs to a garden in my front yard and I made 10 of them. And I sneakily taught families and kids how to count to 10 in Spanish, as well as learn about a bunch of insects and uh, creatures. Uh, and now I'm doing something that's even bigger. <laughs> I am, whoa, waving from Ben. I love Ben. Hi. Um, even bigger than that, I am now doing Alberta Saurus PDX. I'm taking over the Alberta Arts District uh, in Portland, Oregon, two to three dinosaurs uh, a week. I have an iguanodon on my porch, which I can't fit in here. It's that big. That'll be living at Donnie Vegas later this week. I'm working on some dinos now, so I can kind of talk about that and answer some questions show you a little bit of my painting process, and then we have a game. If you're just tuning in, this is Artslandia Happy Hour presented by the Oregon Society of Artists. So thank you so much for joining in. There is a marketplace if you'd like to grab some drinks or snacks. The link should be in the comments, I believe. Uh, check that out, pretty cool. Uh, it's really great. And uh, just one more time, Artslandia, they've given us a place to call home every weekday uh, at 5 p.m. And if you haven't been checking them out and this is your first time, put it on your calendar, it's a blast. Uh, if you want to support them even further than just watching, you can please consider becoming a sustaining subscriber uh, to these happy hours. That link should be pinned somewhere as well. Uh, let's paint my next dinosaur that will be launching tomorrow at the... Uh, at, I, won't give, I won't give away the, the place. You'll have to check that out. So Albertosaurus PDX, I'm going to move my camera just a tad so you can see what I'm doing. Albertosaurus PDX is really cool because businesses are hosting dinosaurs uh, in front of their uh, businesses, which is a blast because these dinosaurs will be out in our neighborhood at all times with someone watching. Oh yeah, there's the uh, drinks and snacks uh, marketplace link. Check that out. Hi, Scott. Um, oh yeah, you know, before we do this, I'm gonna quickly share my screen one more time and show you some photos of the dinosaurs that already exist. Let me pull up the Brachiosaurus, who is the first one. Let me share my screen here again. So sorry. Cool. There we go. So here's the Brachiosaurus that lives at Just Bob. You can check them out uh, at all hours um, that they're open. And if they're not open, you can look in their window and um, see that wonderful blue black Brachiosaurus hanging out. Another one that we've got here is the, hopefully that switches. We'll see if it does. Anyway, you can, you can go to my Instagram, it's okay. This is more important, you can watch me paint. Um, there's a Stegosaurus and several other dinosaurs out. Um, and tomorrow there will be our fourth. And then two to three times a week, I will add them to the neighborhood and they will live on Alberta. And hopefully at some point, uh, you can't even avoid a dinosaur on your walks. So I'm painting a Compsognathus. I don't have just one, because these little dudes are tiny. Um, so I have several of them, but I'm gonna paint one of them for you here. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about Metro Paint and where I get my materials. If you have any questions, feel free to toss them over there. Um, yeah, great. Okay, cool. There's a couple of pinned comments now so you can support Artslandia. Great, all right. So I pre-poured a little bit of paint from Metro Paint, which again is a wonderful organization in Portland who, um, re-spins house paint into their own line of colors. Uh, they've been really wonderful to me and occasionally will even give me some of their like old samples that are sitting around because they know that I'll go through it. So I love going to Metro Paint. Um, in normal times when we're not dealing with the pandemic, you can actually head over there and grab uh, like a gallon of paint for next to nothing, which is fantastic. Um, and the wood I get is always different, but it's often from Rebuilding Center. As you can see, this piece of wood, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but um, it's working really well for these little cops and There's a lot of body to it, and it's in really good shape. Um, highly recommend checking out Rebuilding Center. They have appointments right now. Um, you know, head in, grab something, but also um, if they open up further, just check that place out. It is so incredible. Um, 
So yeah, I grab my wood from there if you're ever considering making cutouts or having a project of your own. Go there first. It's a really wonderful family-owned business in Oregon that you can support. And um, frankly, you're going to save a lot of money by finding uh, reclaimed materials as opposed to going to Lowe's or something like that. Um, or Home Depot, Depot, I should say now. Um, yeah, so this actually, this color that I'm using for the Compsignathus uh, skin is called Sweet Tart. It's, an, uh, ex it's a color that was around uh, through Metro Paint and is, uh, ex um, what's the word? It was like limited and you can't get it anymore, but they had one gallon left. <laughs> and they reached out and kind of said like, hey, you know, you're painting dinosaurs. This is pretty close to that. So wanted to make sure I highlighted that. <clears throat> Feel free to throw some questions over here before we uh, head into our super fun game. Uh, another thing I wanted to throw out there, at the end of this stream, we are actually going, I'm going to give away a piece of my art and I'm going to, as soon as the stream ends, I'm going to run over and hide a piece uh, and I will share the, uh, the place here. So uh, keep your ears open because you might get to walk out of here with a one of a kind Star Wars painting by me. Uh, and it's not big, so you can also bike or walk. I wanted to make sure of that. So keep your eyes open. What was the most difficult slash challenging piece you have done? Honestly, some of these, um, the animals for the A to Zoo were a real challenge, but they evolved um, my artwork. I made an elephant, uh, which you can check out, um, who, well, frankly, is an elephant. I really wanted that piece to be massive, and I couldn't quite figure out how to do it. Um, I ended up kind of layering the wood and uh, it added this cool 3D effect and um, now I can't stop doing it. So um, what was the most challenging piece ended up becoming a way to evolve my art to the next level. How do you decide the design of each animal insect? Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So for the A to Zoo, for example, I, I was working with uh, a letter a day. So for letter C, I would come up with you know, three animals that I wanted to, to potentially make. And I would sit down and sketch them out. And whatever ended up working the best for me, uh, design-wise, is the uh, character that I went with. So um, ultimately, I didn't want to pick uh, the classic animals that you would find in a zoo. I wanted to focus on animals that maybe you had never heard of. One of the coolest things... Uh, one of the coolest things that I got to experience in, while I was hosting the A to Zoo at our home was seeing parents learn with their kids or <laughs> parents learn something that their kids already knew. Um, you know, maybe a cassowary or a dugong or a quokka aren't animals that you've ever heard of. But um, so many parents um, were willing to admit that, like, I had never heard of this animal before and um, I really... Uh, I really cherish this cool moment, this cool memory I got to make that has nothing to do with the current times. Um, you know, at the time, it was basically just COVID-19 that we were dealing with. Um, there's a lot to learn now in the world. <clears throat> but I really thought that was really special. Let's see. thought you might enjoy seeing this Portland artist. Oh, thanks for sharing. Uh, so we're just going to finish up here. The beauty of the weather shifting is the uh, sun is out. <laughs> so things are drying a lot faster than when there is... Uh, humidity in the air like we've been dealing with all uh, season so far. Okay, so here's a really cool thing that Metro Paint has done for me. They occasionally will stop by and give me a little palette of old samples from their laboratory that never made it to, uh, to market basically. So there are colors that either just they didn't think would sell that well or that maybe just like they didn't have enough supplies for. And I have these tiny little uh, metal jars full of paint and I don't even know what colors they are. Some of them have names, some of them have just have numbers. And uh, a couple weeks ago I played a fun little game on my Instagram where we guessed what color would be in each can. And while I thought it was silly at the time, so many people reached out to me and thanked me for this fun, silly little uh, thing. But before we do that, I want to share with you a new project, uh, or an old project that is coming back. Uh, hi from the Theo. Uh, I was a preschool teacher for a long time. And um, well, another fantastic thing from the A to Zoo was the unexpected reunions that I got to uh, have with some of the, the kiddos that went to the school that I used to work at. And uh, that was the best. Theo's 
Theo's uh, parent actually uh, gave me a bunch of wood to work with. So a lot of the animals from the zoo came from that as well. <laughs> All right, so this Compsognathus is coming along. We're just gonna do his little brown spots. I'm reading Jurassic Park right now and um, there's a lot of Compsognathus talk in the beginning, comparing them to chickens, uh, three-toed. They're a little aggressive with uh, smaller animals. If you saw The Lost World, there's some pretty infamous scenes with Compsognathus. So I actually have three of these that are going to the location tomorrow, uh, which is an Albertosaurus PDX first. Uh, also, um, starting tomorrow, I believe, we're going to have Albertosaurus t-shirts for sale, which is very fun. Yesterday. Wow. Happy friendiversary, Danny. That's so cool. Oh yeah, if you don't mind sharing this live stream, that'd be really fun. Um, again, there's gonna be a fun little giveaway at the end where you can head out into the world and find a Star Wars painting that I made. Um, it's Mandalorian based, if anyone's a fan, I definitely uh, would suggest that you hang on <laughs> and uh, follow along for that. It's one of a kind, I've only made one of them. All right, so I'm gonna sit this out to dry. And we're going to come back and check this little dude out later. So bear with me for one moment. <clears throat> All right. So before we get into the game, I want to show you something. Let me move this a little bit. Okay. So for, for Earth Day, I actually joined forces with Metro Paint to create uh, a little group called the Hopefuls. Um, these are five nature-based creatures that uh, are meant to bring hope to the world. Uh, well, there's a deer, there's a raindrop, there's a rainbow, uh, there is a flower, and oh my gosh, I'm forgetting one. Or did I just list five? Is that the problem? Is there, oh, a sun, of course, there's soul. Uh, and these five creatures um, were featured in a DIY cutout kit. I had so many people asking how I made these. And um, we thought it'd be kind of cool to supply people with these materials to uh, to make their own cutouts at home. So we did it. They sold out in like five minutes, which was bonkers. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but a lot of people got to make these fun characters and we thought, let's do it again. So uh, I'm gonna introduce you to Flora. This is Flora, um, little flower, uh, super cute. Love this character. Um, so this is actually something that you can make from these cutout kits, but we are launching quite a few more and they're now shippable. So you don't have to be in Portland to get them. And I'm gonna do the first ever unboxing of a Hopefuls cutout kit. So this is what you'll actually end up getting. Uh, let me point the camera down. So this is a Hopefuls cutout kit. Inside you will get a sheet of facial features that are required to make Flora. Eyes, mouth, eyebrows, and a fun little Mike Bennett sticker. And uh, they're printed by Sticker Ninja, who I love dearly and use for all of my sticker needs. Inside, there's actually a uh, piece of paper that is used mainly to hold this together and shipping. But what's really cool is you can actually spread this out and make a safe, clean uh, painting area so you don't damage any of your uh, furniture or anything like that. Uh, inside, you will find a coloring sheet of all the characters. I'll move that a little closer. We have Soul, uh, sorry, we have Fauna, Drizzy, so here's Flora and Bo. Uh, so these characters will be available. There's gonna be limited amounts of each, uh, but there are even amounts of each. So you have a pretty good chance of getting one you love. There's an instruction sheet that kind of explains everything and lets you know you are using house paint. So please be careful. <laughs> um, and uh, also steps on how to make sure that this is done uh, properly so you can get the final product you want. You have a brush that is washable. So super cool. You can paint on a color and then wash it and let it dry and come back for another one. Um, and inside you'll have a sealed bag of all the paint you need to create the character. And of course, you've got the cutout itself uh, in here as well. Uh, there's a really, huh, that's the best thing. We actually laser cut these this time to make sure that we can make enough for everyone. There's a, a layer of masking tape on here that you get to peel off and it is so satisfying. Maybe the best thing about the cutout uh, the kit, but those are hopefully launching next week. So keep an eye on my Instagram. Um, they're gonna go fast. Um, from experience. So uh, I will make sure you know of a date um, and a time so you can set timers. Uh, here I can grab the other characters so you can see them as well. We have Fauna, Soul, 
Drizzy, and Bo. So all those characters will be available. Super fun. Let's play this game. Okay. <clears throat> oh, and we donated a portion of our uh, hopefuls proceeds to Family Meal PDX as well, who are a great uh, food bank organization that supplies food to uh, people who need it in Oregon. So that was really fun as well. And very important, you think I would have set that up uh, first. Okay, we got some paint cans here. Let's move this camera down just a little so you can see me. So we're gonna, you know, this, this is a honor system here. So these are paints that you can get from, uh, from Metro Paint uh, and try out on your own. Uh, okay, so get ready folks. This is gonna be very exciting. <laughs> so we'll go with an easy one first. Let's go with Summer Sky. This one actually does have a name. It's called Summer Sky. Uh, Adam, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, Adam Cooper, this is a long story, but Adam Cooper is the reason I live in Portland. So got to give him some credit. <laughs> so Jim thinks it's going to be purple. We'll see. Summer Sky, lock in your guesses now. I'm going to shake it up. And we're going to crack this open and see what we can get. I feel like purple is not the worst choice. I guess the question is, is what part of summer sky are you talking about are you talking evening are you talking morning you know you never know all right i have cracked this open michelle says my wonderful partner michelle says it's either bright blue or some kind of sunset situation i agree Liz, oh, see i told you everyone's into this everyone's commenting now uh we got light blue we got orange we got light blue sky blue we got blue golden color blue <laughs> orange orange okay so i see a lot of blues and a lot of oranges and a purple all right i'm gonna reveal the color now with you. If you guess light blue, summer sky. Uh, this is going to be important. I'm painting an iguanodon soon, and I want it to be like a gray purple color or a gray blue color. So I'm going to probably mix this with another color uh, to paint this gigantic iguanodon that I have on the front porch right now. All right. Here's a tough one. This is a tough one. We've got Crater Lake. Um, I assume most of us watching are potentially from Oregon. Uh, if not, um, you know, this could be a little more challenging for you. Scott, I'm playing The Last of Us 2. Uh, I think it's a beautiful storytelling experience, and I'm having a blast doing it. Uh, right before I did this, I actually saw that Scott is a, has a cameo in a video game called something that I just forgot. Do you mind, I think? All right. We're doing some guesses for Crater Lake. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm doing this to let my comp signathus dry so we can finish it. <laughs> We got deep blue. We got taupe. We got uh, blue, dark blue, dark blue. A lot of blue. Blue with a hint of green mist. Uh, very deep, pure lake. Aqua, dark green, deep blue. All right. Here we go. We're going to crack it open. I'll do it. I'll try to do it on camera for you. All right. Oh, my gosh. That's gorgeous. I would call that Crater Lake. Like, they nailed it. This is totally Crater Lake. Hey, if you're just joining us, I just want to let you know you're watching Artslandia Happy Hour. We're just having a little art hang, talking about art, uh, painting a, a dinosaur, talking about animals. Uh, it's been a blast, and uh, we still have 30 minutes. So keep on watching. Uh, we are generously being presented by uh, the uh, Oregon Society of Artists, uh, who uh, are offering free drop-in art classes for watercolor and all sorts of mediums, if you just use the phrase Artslandia. So they're online. Uh, nothing's stopping you. Check that out. Uh, we can do one together because I'm I'm pretty excited. Um, let's see here. We've got DES. This is a tough one. So we're moving on up. This is DES. Uh, Lance says he'd paint his house crater light color. I, I, I hear you. Shannon digs that blue. Uh, Liz, I agree. It's a gorgeous blue. All right. So DES. This is one of the fun ones because we just have no idea what it's going to be. Uh, for those who paint at home, I have an old Sears heater uh, that my partner Michelle used as a child that lives in the garage now, and I lay my paintings underneath it to dry them. So that's actually what we're doing right now so we can finish this dinosaur together. All right, any guesses for DES? This, this is just a, uh, a wild shot in the dark here. Jim says gray. Megan says pink. Michelle says dark elephant skin. That's fun. I like that. Yvonne, Yvonne says orangish. Diane says salmon. <laughs> we shall see. I'm gonna crack this open. I'm not looking. I'm just making sure the lid is off. 
Lance's dark evergreen salmon. We got a purple. We got an orange. All right. Oh, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't guess this together. Uh, I think DES might stand for desert. Potentially. It's like sand. That's actually a really helpful color for me. Um, this could be mixed with that blue to make the Iguanodon uh, skin tone. So that's great. Definitely evil sunset is what DES stands for. That's fun. All right. So we're going to lock that up. We're going to do one more. Then we're going to get back to painting and we're going to uh, talk more about dinosaurs. And I would love, maybe we could pin this comment to hear what kind of dinosaurs you would like to see living on Alberta Street. These are full-size dinosaurs. They are massive. Uh, the one that I'm dropping on Friday is huge. I've got a, I won't spoil it, but there is a fan favorite dinosaur coming out next week. Uh, one that we all know and love and uh, it's going to be massive. So throw those dinosaur suggestions in the comments, please, if you don't mind. This one has nothing written on it at all. There is nothing written on this can. So um, I wouldn't even know what to guess. There's not a color on top or anything. So we're going to shake this up. I can tell that you're all in the lead. <laughs> I'm just going to check one thing. All right. What type of dino do you love best? Uh, that's fun. I, I I never quite thought about what dinosaurs I love the most, but I, I'm i realizing I'm making mostly herbivores right now because I find them interesting. Um, I do find that there are some real heavy hitters uh, in the carnivore aspect of dinosaurs. Um, oh, liquid sunshine, uh, lilac, yellowish, maroon, gray, red. Everyone's all over the place. I love it. Scott's is purple, which is very fun. Um, but yeah, like, like Adam said, actually, Littlefoot, um, The Land Before Time was very important to me as a kid. Um, and a movie called Where Back, also, where dinosaurs come to a city. <laughs> Maybe that's where I got the idea for bringing dinosaurs to my city. Um, I think I'm a big Triceratops fan. Stegosaurus has always been one of my favorites, but I'm very excited to bring a Triceratops to my neighborhood. But I'm making people wait for that. Uh, of course, I'm a Jurassic Park fan, so Velociraptors will have to come soon. Although they have feathers and they're pretty small, so I uh, might have to do some creative license on that. Okay, <laughs> are we ready to see what the mystery color is? I haven't seen it. I would say Yurkel is probably the closest. Um, here we go. Oh, <laughs> that's actually really helpful. It's black. So I'm going to actually mark the lid so I know. All right. Let me go grab our Compsognathus so we can do my favorite part. Um, bear with me for one moment. I'll let you admire our dear friend Flora for a second while I uh, grab our dino. And everyone, I just want you to know that I kitchen showed you and I actually set one out to dry a long time ago. So the one that's on the, that I just painted um, is still pretty wet, unfortunately, but I was prepared. So this one's facing a different direction. Let me just close my garage door. All right. So we're back to painting the Compsognathus. All right. And if you're just tuning in, you are watching Artslandia Happy Hour presented by the Oregon Society of Artists. Uh, my name is Mike Bennett. I reclaim uh, old wood and recycled house paint and make them into fun cutouts that I share with Portland and the neighborhood. Uh, definitely uh, should have shared this video if you can. Uh, if you're looking for some fun tunes, uh, there's a song that's written by Joe Kai and performed by Joe Kai and myself called The A to Zoo. You can find that on Spotify and iTunes. Uh, you get to learn about 26 brand new animals uh, in that video. So. You're lucky because we get to we get to do my favorite part of um, any painting. I'm gonna do a little shading later, but the best part of a painting, in my opinion, is the black line work. I think that's what really brings this cartoon to life. So I have here a Sharpie black oil-based marker. Uh, this is what I use for the final step for all of my paintings. Uh, as you can see, as you could kind of see on the painting that I was working on earlier. Uh, so let me shake this up so we can uh, get this marker going. There we go. Um, 
black lines are really important to my illustration style. So that's the last step. I get to go back and uh, do all the black line work and really bring this creature to life. I do see a question over here. Sarah asks, have I ever seen the cartoon Aquanauts? Um, so I have not seen Aquanauts, but I, I know of it. And um, I've heard fantastic things. I've also heard there's a Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua uh, song in Octonauts, which is pretty cool. Uh, if it's not Octonauts, it's another show similar. Uh, Zool from Ghostbusters, very fun. All right, and yes, if you're tuning in just now, make sure you stick around for just a few more minutes. I am going to hide a piece of Star Wars artwork. It's one of a kind that I made uh, that you can actually find immediately after this uh, conversation. So here we go. I'm taking my oil-based marker and I'm going to start doing uh, some line work around this. I've been told this is a very satisfying step in the process. Um, and I gotta say, selfishly, I completely agree. I really love this part. It's my favorite. If you have any questions about what I do or if you have any ideas for future projects, let me know. Um, I'm always down to make new cartoon characters and creatures come to life in our neighborhood. Uh, I'm working on a Totoro that's going to hide in the woods that someone has actually commissioned for me. So there's going to be a life-size Totoro from the uh, Studio Ghibli film, My Neighbor Totoro, that will be hiding somewhere in the woods that maybe you'll someday stumble upon, which is so much fun for me. <clears throat> if you could bring anything back to life, what would it be? Uh, as far as paintings go, I mean, I am a big fan of Studio, Studio Ghibli, um, but I have to say that I'm kind of doing it now. I love dinosaurs so much. Uh, I've, I've always loved them. I never quite grew out of it. And the fact that I get to bring giant recycled dinosaurs to my neighborhood in the Alberta Arts District for the entire summer straight through September is a dream come true for me. I can't believe I got this opportunity. I'm having a blast doing it. I can't stop. I'm up I'm up thinking about the new dinosaurs that I get to make all the time. Uh, and I'm networking, which has been a blast. I've been meeting so many neighborhood businesses that I've loved since I lived in Oregon um, who want a dinosaur. And that, as an artist, feels so great. I'm so excited about this. Um, I can't believe I got to do it. Do you sketch out your artwork before? That's a great question. Okay, so um, the question was asked if I sketch out my artwork before cutting the wood. So here's a tip that I will share with you because ultimately anyone can make a cutout as long as they're safe, have access to a way to cut the wood and um, you know whatever medium you want to paint the wood uh, with. So the way I do it is I actually sketch all of my characters out digitally on an iPad. On an iPad. And you can do that any way you want. Um, whether you use an iPad or a different tablet or if you sketch on Photoshop. But what's really cool is you can do that and then project it and maximize, minimize, zoom in, or, or change the shape um, to fit the piece of wood that you have um, as you see fit. So what's cool about that is you actually aren't going to have to grid anything to make sure that you get all your lines right. Um, it's a really efficient way to make sure you're getting everything sorted out. Have you done family characters? Um, I'm not totally sure what you're asking, but I can say that I've done a lot of dog portraits for people. So for a long time, I've had I had a lot of uh, really fun interactions with animals in Portland. Um, I know Shannon is in here uh, of the Rojo the Llama family. Um, so Rojo the Llama has been over here. Um, the L for Llama and the A to Zoo was inspired by and painted from an image of Panda the Llama from the same herd who actually came to visit the zoo. You can find videos of that online. Um, I painted a pig in here. I painted countless dogs for dog portraits. And that's been a really great time. And it's fun to see everything shift towards different animals now. <clears throat> How do I break through art block? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I think one thing that's been really great is when I start a 26 day project, I know that what I'm going to be doing is going to be related to that. So I really like challenging myself. Um, years ago, I did 100 video game villains, uh, one villain every day. So I knew for 100 days that I had a project that I could work on and I knew that all I had to do was pull from my list and recreate that thing. I think challenging yourself and limiting your canvas is a really fun way to um, work every day and draw every day, but also, um, you don't have to spend as much time thinking about your, what your subject matter is actually going to be. So 
I wouldn't recommend doing something for 100 days in a row, <laughs> but I do recommend um, giving yourself a fun challenge. Try try drawing something every weekend. Um, for example, every Saturday, you sit down and draw, I don't know, um, another type of sea creature or a, a something like sketch or watercolor a planet every weekend. Um, and that way you don't have to spend a ton of time racking your brain as to what you are going to make. Uh, were you born in Oregon? I was not, actually. I was born in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. Went to school for art education, ended up shifting gears towards uh, computer design and uh, illustration. Had a great time there. Um, ended up moving to Oregon just a few years ago uh, from Pennsylvania, and I it's been a dream ever since. I, I love it here, and the art community is so welcoming and incredible. I, I, I love it. It's the best. All right, so we're slowly finishing up the marker work here. Uh, the best part, I would say, is the pupils. So we're getting there slowly but surely. Uh, again, uh, if you are just tuning in for the tail end of this, you are watching Artslandia Happy Hour, uh, and we are having a great time making a little Comps Ignathus. Uh, I've got three of these that are going to go out on Alberta Street to hang out with dinosaur lovers and little learners all over the place. And I can't wait to share this with you. Uh, and all of you got to see it get made. Uh, I created something called the A to Zoo, which is a, a lawn zoo in my front yard that now lives at, lives at Hammer and Jack's uh, in southeast Portland. Definitely go visit it. Uh, you can see some of the creatures that I made in person. They're viewable 24-7. And they're at an amazing toy store that... Um, deserves all the love that we can give them. Uh, if you want an A to Zoo shirt, you can go to shirtnerdery.com slash Mike Bennett art. Uh, you can grab an A to Zoo shirt, which will help out uh, Don't Shoot PDX. Uh, or you can uh, hold on and buy a poster in just a few days. Uh, I use Metro Paint, which is Respawn House Paint, to make a bunch of my art, if not all of it at this point. And um, I'm working with Metro Paint to create the Hopefuls DIY cutout kit. Uh, which you'll be able to purchase next week. Um, there's only a limited amount. They are shippable. Um, hopefully you can get one. They went very fast, so definitely keep an eye out and set alarms to uh, make sure that you get one of your very own. <clears throat> and in just a few minutes, I'll be hiding a cutout for you to find. Let's see. Uh, of course, Crystal. I'm, I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. I'm actually from right in between the two. A little town called Seelands Grove. Watching from Virginia. How do you deal with mistakes or accident? Okay, so that's so great. Um, so I gotta say, um, mistakes can be really intimidating when you're working in specific mediums. Uh, for example, watercolors can be a little unforgiving. Uh, the beauty of acrylics and wood is you can sand, you can sand and rub things off. And, um, with what I'm doing, it's really fun because texture only adds to, uh, the, the creations here. So, um... You know, with the dinosaurs, if I mess up and I have to paint over a color, it just makes it bumpier and scalier, which is really fun. Uh, let's see. Hi, Mike. I just hopped on TikTok, and you were on the top of my following. Oh, that's cool. Thanks for coming on over. Mike, is the new location? It is in Southeast Portland, Adam. Um, oh, <laughs> I wish. No, it's actually um, the space that the uh, A to Zoo, um, I'm sorry, that Hammer and Jax is going to be moving into. They're expanding and making their... Uh, store just a bit bigger. It's more of a community space than just a toy store. Um, so when things are safer, there's going to be art classes and, and uh, socializing hangouts and everything there. But um, if you go, definitely say hi uh, to the family that owns it. They're wonderful and um, we'll share their love with you. Okay. So again, I'm going to do a little more, uh, a little more uh, shading on this guy, but he is relatively done. So let me move my camera back. So you can see the nearly finished Compsignathus that will live on Alberta starting tomorrow. So this is Compsignathus. I'm gonna post an educational video about these little these little uh, critters, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really fun. There's gonna be three of them, so I will kind of let in here and I will take a glance at. Uh, here we'll do this. Let's give him a little way to stand that way he can watch the stream with us. And let's see, how did you and Jai Jokai meet? Oh, actually, my partner Michelle uh, is um, went to high school with Joe, 
And uh, we got to meet May because of Michelle and sharing her friends with me and being a wonderful human. Uh, Joe and I um, have become very close since then, and we're uh, very excited to be potentially working on a dinosaur song together. So uh, again, check out the A to Zoo song on Spotify or Apple Music. And yeah, Artslandia, I agree. They're just happy accidents. Really, they are. Uh, watercolors are very unforgiving. <laughs> Michelle is confirming that, yes, uh, she did um, introduce us. So again, thank you so much for tuning into Artslandia. We're not quite finished. I have a big reveal for a location for a Star Wars cutout. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in uh, either way. Uh, this has been Artslandia Happy Hour. Uh, I'm going to read a little thing I wrote again about Artslandia. Well, a little thing that I want to read. Um, Artslandia has given us a place to call home every weekday at, at 5 p.m. I highly encourage you to add this to your calendar. Join in. There's some incredible people. I know a pianist is joining us next week. Um, <clears throat> I think I might need to get a little more information on that. I tried to find our schedule, but I don't want to leave the screen. So if we can get that in the private chat, I'd love to share information on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> John Nilsson, the pianist, is joining us next uh, tomorrow, I, I'm sorry, at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So don't forget to tune in for that. That's going to be wonderful. I can't wait. Uh, if you want to support the uh, the Artslandia efforts past just tuning in for these wonderful uh, happy hours, you can consider becoming a sustaining subscriber to the Artslandia happy hours. There's a link pinned in the comments. Um, check that out. And um, I'm very honored to be presented by uh, the Oregon Society of Artists today. Um, they're working hard to make sure to bring art to uh, the public for um, artists who aren't quite as followed or don't have a platform or have a huge platform. They're bring, bringing this to everybody. They've been around since 1926. Uh, they're offering online art classes right now. If you just drop the name Artslandia, you can drop in for a free art class of a medium of your choosing. And I know that list is available online. Uh, and I'm excited because I think we're going to be working on something together, too. I don't know how much I can say about that, but I am very pumped. Uh, Liz says, this has been a very fun and informative live stream. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for tuning in all the way from Canada. That's very cool. Uh, I'd love to hide something in bed. That's been a really cool thing I've done. Um, traveling has been great uh, when it's safe. Uh, I've been taking cutouts that are themed to the space I'm in. Uh, so I brought a bunch of sea turtles and chickens and roosters to... Uh, Hawaii. We brought a bunch of cacti to uh, the Southwest, to Texas and New Mexico that I hid. And I, I have people reach out all the time saying, I found your your uh, your cactus and all sorts of wonderful things. Um, I brought some seagulls to, uh, some wooden seagulls to Cape Cod. I brought a bunch of wooden pigeons to New, New York. I'm sure there's many that I'm missing. I hid 70 uh, bear heads at the Pickathon uh, Music Festival last week. Um, so once things get a little safer, I will be hiding uh, art all over Portland again. Um, I've made nearly 800 cutouts since starting this project just about a year and a half ago. So in that spirit, I want to share with you a super fun uh, thing. I am going to reload these comments because I think they're disappearing here. Cool. Um, I'm going to hide a cutout for, for one of you to find. Um, I will not share this anywhere else but this uh, live stream. If you're watching this later, uh, after the stream, unfortunately, it's probably going to be claimed. Um, so let me grab it. I made a Mandalorian helmet that I'm going to be taking to a location that I will say, as soon as this stream ends, I will say it out loud. Uh, I will say this place, mm, some hints, it smells great on a windy day. Uh, those who um, are lactose intolerant may want to avoid this restaurant. Uh, and, uh, uh, you might have to, uh, take some public transportation to enjoy, uh, the delicacies of this space. So I will, <laughs> those are, those are awful clues, but I will be dropping off this Mandalorian helmet at a location that I will say in just a few moments. Um, in the meantime, we have about five minutes before this is over. If there are any more questions for me, I'd love to answer them. Uh, make sure you check out Alberta, Albertasaurus PDX. Come on up to, to, to Alberta Street. Visit all the dinosaurs. We're going to be, I'm going to be adding two to three every week through September. So eventually um, you're going to see them everywhere and it's going to be a blast. Um, I will reveal the, the actual location, Jackie, in just a few moments. I just uh, want to make sure I can get over there before someone else does. Um, so yeah, any, any other questions I would be happy to answer. Um, and I just want to thank Artslandia uh, for this wonderful opportunity. It means a lot to me as a, as a, um, a full-time artist. Uh, these opportunities are 
priceless and it means the world to me. And thank you so much to Oregon Society of Artists. I can't wait to work together. I'm so honored that you presented me today. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you want to take a class together. I would love to drop in for one of these free classes. Um, I got a B minus in watercolor in college. So uh, maybe I should take another class, um, which is very fun. Uh, yeah, planning a trip from Seattle to see the dinosaur for my birthday. Yvonne, that's amazing. I hope you do. Um, Definitely check out the uh, hours for each of the businesses where the dinosaurs are located. Um, because they're sometimes the dinosaurs are inside, sometimes they're outside. Uh, Mayan McDermott asked what my favorite thing about the A to Z was, and it was definitely meeting the neighborhood. I met so many people, and um, the support every single day is something I will never forget. Creating memories during a pandemic that have nothing to do with the pandemic is a priceless thing to me. Um, <laughs> uh, what medium would you want to try that you haven't done uh, you aren't good at yet there's a lot of them frankly I'm not great at ceramics I would love to spend more time doing that um, there's a lot of painting techniques that I'd struggle with like oil oil painting and such um, which is challenging there's so many things so many things that I probably don't, can't even make a list because um, there's so many mediums out there I am still selling, selling shirts yeah there's a bunch of Mike Bennett shirts uh, at shirtnerdery.com slash Mike Bennett art Check those out. We just dropped the Albertosaurus shirt of my uh, uh, National Park logo designed by um, uh, Girl Power Illustrations. Hannah is wonderful, and we work together to bring you uh, the A to Z poster, which will be available uh, next week for purchase um, at the same website as my shirts are available. So don't wait on these. I know there's very limited editions, so check that out. Um, all right. So without further ado, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to say one more time, please tune in tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Pacific time to check out John Nelson, the pianist. Um, going to have an amazing time here uh, with a lot of music and probably less talking. I've been rambling a lot today. Uh, so um, thank you for creating for us. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's my dream uh, to be able to do this. So thank you for caring. Uh, all right. I am going to go take this Mandalorian helmet to the grilled cheese grill on Alberta Street. It's going to be under the front bumper of the bus that you eat the, the grilled cheese on. So um, if you want this, I'm gonna sign it right now, take it over there and drop it off. Um, maybe I'll say hi to one of you. Uh, let's just make sure we keep our uh, six foot distance. Uh, in the meantime, keep checking out Artslandia and keep sharing your love with them because they're a wonderful organization full of amazing humans. And uh, I'm just honored to be a part of this. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone. I uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow when you visit my comp signathus on Alberta Street. <laughs>